Hey guys, I'm here in my office, my war room, uh, doing it. Uh, this video is going to be in a couple different places, but I'm doing a review of uh, Valley Food Storage freeze dried food. Um, they sent me their 70 serving kit. Um, it's all freeze dried. I've, I've opened it up just to, you know, look inside and whatnot, but I'm going to open it and go through the contents with you. And then the video will, um, the video will be take place a couple different places, uh, testing, uh, taste testing, testing, um, some of the products in here. I don't, I'm not going to test all the products, but I'll, I'll pick, you know, um, a few because it's, 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 it's an awesome Spackle bucket kit. It's what you find a lot of the freeze dried foods come in. I absolutely love these one because it's a perfect seat, but two because uh, you can you don't have to keep the food in there and you can store water in here. You know, not just as a bucket, but as water storage. If you're in a confined space like maybe an apartment or something like that, you can take the food out, put it on a shelf, and use this for water storage. So you got a lot of uses with that, and that's I do like that with most freeze-dried food companies you know, long-term freeze-dried food companies so all right so let's open it up and we'll um we'll start with um we'll start with what's on top we'll go freeze-dried bananas so in each one of these it says it comes with like fruit vegetable and meat servings uh so the bananas is in this one there's five it says five servings per most of these are all five servings per pouch. This one makes it 70 servings. Um, so, you know, and, and the expiration date on this is uh, July of 2047. So it's got, what, 25, right? 25 years shelf life. So, freeze-dried bananas. Then we've got chicken a la king. Five servings. Um, chicken a la king. Freeze-dried potato dices. So there's your fruits and veggies. You got potato dice. You know, people say that potatoes are not vegetables. They're starch. I digress. Uh, freeze-dried potatoes. Strawberry oatmeal. Ten servings in this pouch with an expiration date of... What it says, it's 20 years? Yes, so tw uh, 42 on that so strawberry oatmeal italian wild risotto mac and cheese chicken teriyaki irish pub cheddar soup fettuccine alfredo Apple cream of wheat and brown, maple brown sugar oatmeal. See, and that, I, I absolutely love. Basically, everything in this is perfect for family. Because So I got, I got, I have two kids, six-year-old and a three-year-old. Uh, six-year-old, uh, our son, Theodore, he's autistic. So he, he has a very a finite amount of things that he will, he will eat. Um, I think I could get him in, in an emergency situation, I could get him to eat the mac and cheese. Um, same thing with his little brother, three-year-old. I think I could get him to eat the mac and cheese and maybe the strawberry oatmeal and maybe the freeze-dried bananas because he likes bananas. Uh, if he doesn't want to eat it dry, you can always reconstitute them, rehydrate them, just put them in warm water, cold water. Um, warm water works faster, cold water takes longer. Um, but so like, I, I, and that's one thing being a parent, uh, and, and trying to have, a, have, because I have a bunch of long-term long -term food storage in our pantry. So this just adds to it, which is awesome. Because, like, like I said, having kids, especially maybe picky eaters, you've got to, when I look at something, when I look at all of this, I look at not just what I can eat, but what bo the boys can eat. Because they're going to eat first when it comes to uh, a food situation. Um, trying not to use any um, any of the... What's the jig words? Any of the, uh, what's the word? I don't even know the word uh, I'm looking for. The code words or whatever you want to call them. So like, I like so for Theodore, he probably would be, he'd eat the bananas and the strawberry oatmeal because he likes strawberries. Um, and the, get him to eat the mac and cheese. 
maybe the maple brown sugar oatmeal because it's sweet, right? And then base, so that's one kiddo. And then basically for the other kiddo, Edwin, the only thing he wouldn't eat probably is chicken teriyaki. And then Edwin would eat everything else. Um, you know, the great thing about potato rice is you can add it. It's just 10 servings. But it, 10 servings, half a cup. Um, so that's 20 half cups. I mean, you could make it 40 quarter cups and make it 20, 20 servings. Um, and add that to all these mains. You got the chicken ala king, uh, chicken ala king, um, Itali Italian risotto, fettuccine alfredo, um, chicken teriyaki, and the uh, Irish pub, um, pub cheddar soup. You could add the freeze dried potatoes to all of that to up the caloric content because I think the highest one here is the cheddar soup, and that's probably because of the dairy in it. Um, the mac and cheese is 270. A mac and cheese with potatoes, that'd be pretty good, like a quasi baked mac and cheese. Um, you could add the potatoes to that. Say you could add, you could reconstitute the straw uh, bananas and add it to the strawberry oatmeal or the apple cream of wheat. And then you'd have apple banana, cream of wheat. Well, basically, these are both oatmeals. These are all oatmeals. It's just um, not, how do I, um, a, not a gruel. Because um, obviously this isn't, no, it's wheat. But like a cereal, there you go, a cereal. Um, you can add bananas to all three of these. Uh, well, maple brown sugar might not be the best with bananas, but you could do it. So basically with these, you have like the bananas and the potatoes are like add-ons to everything. Now remember, once you open the package, you want to make sure you keep it closed, right? I didn't know. You want to keep them closed, sealed. Um, and generally when you open something that's free dried like this, especially if you're in a humid climate, you have maybe a week because you're opening and closing the bag you're letting the moisture in there um, and especially if you don't have refrigeration you don't want to have moisture get in there and freaking um start grow um growing not necessarily dry mold but, but just black mold itself and that's the other thing with freeze-dried things with a lot um with sugar or acid in them is they get dry mold like i've eaten old mres from the early 90s and for the longest time, the, whatchamajig, um, freeze-dried taster choice, taster's choice coffee, I had all was perfect. So, you know, you, the almost 30-year-old freeze-dried coffee in a paper packet within the plastic packet that, like, an accessory packet comes in, um, an MRE, and they were fine. And then there, I had a, I had a time there where all, probably half a dozen, every time I opened up one of those older brown bag MREs, uh, the Taster's Choice had dry mold, so it's a white mold on it. Um, that's what can happen when things are sugary. Oatmeal, not necessarily, but like bananas, or if they're freeze-dried apples, things sugary or acidic. So if there was like, it's not really anything acidic, which is good, because sugars and acidic cause, when they're freeze-dried, can cause dry mold. Um, obviously here nothing's wet. But yeah. So this is awesome. I think because I'm gonna I'm gonna taste test one of these, um, maybe two. I really want to like save the things that I know the boys will eat. I know the boys will eat this, and then so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna taste test the chicken ala king. I'm not gonna do it here at home. I want to do it in a field type environment just for giggles. Um, so I think I'm gonna try the chicken olive king and then after that, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll pick something else. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, so next up will be the field test of the chicken olive king. All right. Hey guys, so I'm up here in the Franklin Mountains, gonna make up some of this chicken a la king from valley food storage chicken a la king i'm up here in the franklins just gonna have a quick lunch got my 
ember lit stove with my sterno can, um, with a sterno can in it, and ember lit stove, sterno can, and then I have my, this fits a, the bottom of a small or a large Nalgene, and um, so yeah, so I have that heating up water. Now on the instructions on the food, it says, it says boil, bring a cup and a half. So, <laughs> um, so all the freeze dried rations and food that I've ever had, I've actually, I've, I've almost, I don't think I've ever actually used boiling water. So I'm just going to heat this up. You can already see the small bubbles. Sterno, at this altitude, maybe. Um, Sterno won't necessarily boil water unless it's... It's like maybe six, eight ounces of water. And it's closer than this to uh, to the top. Like an actual Sterno stove. I also apologize if you guys hear... Oop. I also apologize if you guys hear any bu buzzing or anything like that because um there's these there's tons of these they're like they're not black flies like back in new england they're like midges they're like no seams so i apologize for that so what i'm gonna do is i'm not gonna do the serving size i'm just gonna i'm just here for a quick lunch right so mix this up a bit there's the uh there's the uh, Desiccant, de decicent, desiccant packet. Silica gel. Mix this up really well. Pour a small portion of it. I brought a second, a different type of canteen cup. Of, um, it's actually an Arctic canteen cup, but it's wider. And um, I, I like it for, for eating food out of. So, yeah, it says... Bring a cup, uh, so the serving size is a quarter cup, and I already went over that kind of earlier in the video about how you could split up serving sizes. So serving size is a quarter cup. Bring a cup and a half of water to boil. Add half a cup of mix to the boiling water. So that's, um, so that's half a cup. So that's for two people, right? That's a serving for two people. Cover, uh, um, cover and lower heat to simmer. Stir occasionally. Cook for 18 to 20 minutes. Well, we aren't going to be following those directions <laughs> explicitly. Um, we are going to wait for this water to get a little warmer and then mix up the food. So, stand by. All right. So, I, my dumbass, with the kit that I have, my food in this kit, other than what I brought with me, is just pouches and bars. So I looked, I thought I packed it in the, the pack, I, the, the bag I brought the ration in, or not ration, the, the food, the meal in, right? I can't find the MRE spoon. So I guess I'm SOL on that. So I'm just gonna have to make do with my big old Gerber. So using my hat, as a mitt, because it's stainless, so it, you know, still retains a lot of heat. Pour the water in with the mixture. Here, hold on, let me pause this, get the stove out. All right, the stove is out. The, uh, the food has been sitting for a minute. If I wouldn't necessarily suggest using your <laughs> knife to eat reconstitute but i added i had enough water that when this rehydrates it's gonna be a little wetter than what you would normally want like when you're rehydrating an mr uh, uh freeze-dried ration freeze <laughs> keep saying ration i apologize i know this isn't necessarily a ration um so yeah so it oh it smells delicious bits of mushroom and chicken, little tiny bits of chicken, noodles. <sighs> Smells great. So they sent me their 70, like I said at the beginning of it, 70 serving pack. And I felt like doing this, 
um, doing this kind of review instead of, you know, because I, I, when they, when they reached out to send me the food, um, they asked me if I was interested. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. But I hadn't really heard of the company before. You know, I've only ever really heard of Mountain House and like the Patriot Supply Company and stuff. So when they reached out, I went and looked them up. I watched some review videos. And the thing is, all the review videos, everybody is like in their home, in their kitchen, like on their porch or something. So I was like, I want to make it a little different than the ones you, what you normally see, right? I want to make it where maybe you grabbed um, one of these packets and you're going out into the field, field graft or, or uh, e and &E or bug out training or whatever you want to call it, right? So that is why I'm doing this up here. So let's, um, I'm going to give it, I'm not going to make you guys sit through it. I'm going to give it a, eh, five more minutes and then we'll come back and I'll, I'll taste test it. All right. So it's, it's been about five minutes now. Let me, I'm going to try one of the noodles first. Yeah. Oh, the seasoning, um, a little bit of oregano, um, garlic, definite, definite onion and the mushroom together. Hold on, I'm gonna take a big gulp. Yum. Yeah, wow, that's really good. For a chicken a la king from like a, you know, a big serving, that's actually pretty, um, wow, that's good. I would rate that as a freeze-dried ration, chicken a la king. Now, obviously, like I said, it didn't have boiling water. This is in a field condition, right? Um, <laughs> spoon, dumbass. Um, but I, I, out of a 10 for freeze-dried ration, I'd rate that a 7, 7.5. You know, my pinnacle is, um, my two, two top two pinnacles is the Mountain House freeze-dried chili mac and the um, the old from the old MREs and rations, which you can still find, and uh, not um, um, from the old brown bag MREs, you can still find the freeze the Mountain House Oregon freeze dried Mountain House um, fruit, like the fruit squares, and those are my top two. So those are both tens for me. So everything below that, you know, that's my scale for freeze dried, and this, yeah. That's a solid seven, seven and a half. That's pretty good. Sweet. All right, well, thank you guys for coming out here with me and trying this. And then the next one I will be, I think I will be inside. I'm going to try one of the oatmeals or wheats, cream of wheats or something like that. I'm going to try one of those. So, all right, cool. Thank you guys for watching this part. And we'll go to the next part. So we're home in the kitchen, and now we're gonna prepare the next uh, dish that we're going to try out. And it is the apple cream of wheat. Um, uh, it's, like a, it's a hot cereal, basically. So the instructions are bring one cup of water to boil, add a third of a cup of the mixture to the boiling water, stir well, boil for two minutes, lower the heat to simmer, stir occasionally, and then cook, and cook for three to five minutes, Let's uh, let cool and enjoy. So we are going to add a third of a cup of this to a cup of boiling water, and then we will um, try it out. So hold on, let's, uh, let's get it into the water. All right, so one third of a cup into the water. Stir, 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 stir. Bring the heat down a little bit. And just gonna keep stirring. Kind of bubbling like a porridge. There we go. Stir, stir, stir. So what I'm making is this is good. This is one serving. So it says to low boil for about two minutes. So we'll keep it on this heat for about two minutes. And then, oh, so it says cook for three to five minutes. So the whole cook time is approximately three to five minutes. Stir to keep it from sticking. 
All right, so we're gonna let this, um, where does it say? Simmer for just a couple minutes. So let's stand by and we'll wait and I'll, uh, I'll serve it up. All right, so it's finished cooking, it's finished simmering. So we're just gonna serve it up in a, a regular bowl. Now it's interesting, I've, I think I've maybe had cream of wheat once in my life, right? So, and I've, I've, I follow directions. Um, I think I might have let the boiling water not boil too long, but you know, when it boils, the, the amount evaporates pretty quickly. So it might not be the perfect amount of water that, that the recipe says. So looking at it, it really has the, it, almost the consistency of, so when I went to Kenya, um, it, it's in East End, West Africa. One of the main dishes is it's a boiled white cornmeal um, and they, they boil it to make it kind of sticky. So you see how it, sticky it is. It's not runny. It, it's just kind of like a sticky, um, almost like a paste. And they call it, in, in Kenya, it's called ugali. Um, and it, it has different names all over Africa, but it's the same thing. It's just a sticky, thick, uh, sticky, thick, boiled white cornmeal. And they eat it with everything. They normally, they eat it with their hands. And they've got a little bowl of water and wash their fingers. And then they They'll take a piece of ugale out of the, the bowl and they'll dip it in the cabbage or the stew and then they just eat it that way. Um, so that's what this looks like. So let me... It has, it basically has the same consistency as something like ugale too. It, the grains, the wheat grains, aren't too terribly thick. And like I said, the way that I made it um, it might be stickier than like, some people might like it wetter, almost like a gruel. Um, I bet you, you could actually make this if you used less mix. This is a third of a cup. So if you used a fourth of a cup in the same amount of water, you probably could stretch this because this is for 10 servings. So this is one serving. I made it for one serving. And I bet you, you could almost stretch this to 20 servings if you stretched it and made it more like a gruel. Now it's, uh, it's just the right amount of sweetness where it's just the right amount of sweetness where it's not too sweet like a cereal or like you have oatmeal and you add too much sugar to it or like or even like a normal prepackaged brown sugar oatmeal um maple brown sugar oatmeal it's just enough where you're not because like plain ugale right when it's made you make it with just salt so you can make it as salty as you want or as bland as you want, but really it's just a side dish. So I would I would make this. I want to eat this mm, with some fruit, freeze dried, whatever freeze dried fruit you have. I bet you with bananas, cause, bananas because it's apple. So you can't really. There's not really any cinnamon. It's just apple granules and sugar, which give it it just it's not apple cinnamon. So it just has a very slight apple flavor. So I bet you if you put like the freeze-dried bananas that came in this container. I bet you if you put the freeze-dried bananas in it. It would um make it go um make it go longer. So like a third of a cup. So if you made this a quarter of a cup with a cup of water and then added you count the chips out. Eight banana chips into that, broke the banana chips up. Because the calories for this, for a third of a cup is 150. So if you're bumping that down to a quarter of a cup, you're looking at maybe 120, 110. Add the bananas, and you're probably back up to right around 150. Um, but you're making it last longer. So, yeah, that's really good. I like that. So, all right, I'm going to finish this. But there you go. Preparing the food and trying it in the field environment here at home, just in a kitchen, where it's a hell of a lot easier to make. Um, apple cream of wheat. Nostalgia points, because it reminds me of Ugale, and I, I like I like that consistency, that, that doughy, pasty consistency. Um, I would say, yeah, it's a, it's a six out of 10. It, it could, it could be sweeter. I understand that 
don't necessarily want it to be sweeter. It could be sweeter. And I know I know that they go by serving. So this is just under a pound. But if the bag, you know, I, I only picked up, but if the bag was completely full and you were getting like 20 ounces in the bag, I feel like that'd be worth the space, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's a six, it's a six, uh, six and a half out of 10. Because remember, it's also just, it's also just farina and basically sugar. So it's, it's not too much sugar, but it's a ton of carbs. So it's filling you up, but it's not necessarily fueling you for what you might need to be doing where you need protein and, and potentially simple sugars like fruit to, to fuel you. So yeah, I'd say this is a six and a half out of 10 because it really does have a good flavor and it's not too bland. So yeah, six and a half out of 10. So there you go. All right, so that concludes the, the testing, not field testing, but the testing of the, the different foodstuffs because they're not rations. You can ration them, but they're not rations. So there you go. So that concludes the testing of the, the foodstuffs from the, um, from the Valley Food Storage 70 serving kit, uh, you know, storage kit. So there you go. All right. All right, guys. So. We're done doing the field testing back here in my office. Um, just a, a brief overview, I guess, of, of the items, right? So both the entree dish and the, the breakfast style dish, the hot cereal that I ate, they were good. They were delicious. The, um, the entree, the chicken a la king was good. I bet you it would be even better if it wasn't cooked in a field type environment. But like I said in that vid part of the video, I wanted to kind of just change it up. The cream of wheat was was delicious. Reminded me of ugale. Um, the reason I gave it a six and a half, you know, it was it just basically because, not seasoning, but but like I said, it was just sweet enough where where it wasn't like just a bland paste. But it could have potentially been sweeter and i mean even potentially adding some freeze-dried apple chips into it just small i'm not talking like huge cost but just adding some freeze-dried apple and maybe adding cinnamon to make it apple cinnamon cream of wheat just a little bit i know it's all costs um i get how comp I, I get why companies do what they do but i'm just saying if they added a little bit of cinnamon a little bit of apple um chunks to that cream of wheat and with like the chicken a la king maybe a little more freeze-dried chicken um i know when it's mixed with other things it's not necessarily not a shelf stable it's just um you know when you mix it with things like the chicken broth and stuff it 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 um it may not last as long as you want it to make it also with mixing it with those with those dry powders it makes it more susceptible to um retaining moisture so my overall um, overall on the Valley Food Storage 70 servings kit, I would I would give this a seven and a half, eight out of ten. It's it's freeze dried goods. They're they're meant to last in excess of ten plus years, uh, depending on which item in the in the packaging. Freeze dried, you know, if you keep it freeze dried, no moisture in it. It, freeze drive will last decades. Like I said, I, th I think in the first portion of the video, I said I've had a freeze dried freeze dried stuffs from the late eighties. They're still good, not no not getting sick or anything. So, um, I would definitely check out Valley Food Storage. They just brought back. They they had run out of stock and they were restocking their meat protein um, packets. Their meat protein containers um check that out because really like freeze-dried like um chicken and freeze-dried like the sauce so i think they have the sausage crumbles both of those are perfect meats beef depending on the fat content is somewhat iffy for their longevity because the fat um the fat might potentially go rancid chicken's very lean so that chicken really does as long as you keep it freeze-dried properly with moisture out of it chicken lasts forever and so the reason i say sausage not the beef yes the sausage have fat in it but it ha it's a fattier content and it's got a higher caloric content than just like freeze-dried ground beef um it might not last as long 
as the chicken, like like the beef. It might not last as long as the chicken, but it has a higher caloric content, and I would totally take sausage over ground beef um, to be able to mix with things like rice and whatnot any day. Because it also sausage is also already um, seasoned, so you might not even need seasoning. You got you got five pounds of rice and a packet of the the freeze dried sausage. You know you can make that go a long way without any additional salt or pepper or seasonings. So Valley Food Storage, uh, I I give them two thumbs up. Seven and a half, just because of just because of the um, those things that I said about those individual meals that I. The, the critiques of those individual meals that I did. Um, seven and a half, eight, two thumbs up. It's just, it's good to go. I think it's worth it. I really do. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It's probably one of the longest videos I've done. It's definitely the longest ration food video I've done. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, stay tuned for another ration or some type of food um, video coming soon. So thank you guys for watching. All right.